Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel of the Sailing Vessel Expeditious. Today we're going to talk about adjusting the valve gap in the outboard. This outboard that I have is a Mercury 4 horsepower 4 stroke. Um, if you own one of these engines, you may already know that um, the exact same engine is Tohatsu 4, 5 or 6 horsepower as well as the Nissan 4, 5 and 6 horsepower. Um, so all the three brands, basically I don't know if they license the engine or if they just manufacture it in the same factory and uh, put different labels on them, but they look identical, the parts are all interchangeable and the only difference is the label on the outside. The difference between 4, 5 and 6 horsepower is in the size of the carburetor. So basically you can take a 4 horsepower engine, swap the carburetor from a 6 horsepower and you get a 6 horsepower engine. Um, so the differences are very small, so if you have one of these engines, um, this video will be hopefully helpful to you. The reason um, I decided to record it is because YouTube is full of um, videos on changing the oil, changing the impeller, changing the spark plug, uh, but there was nothing about the valves. And in my friend's uh, outboard, uh, a push rod, basically this the uh, stick that opens and closes the valve as the engine rotates, broke for some reason. And um, after trying all the usual things like cleaning the carburetor, checking the fuel, checking the spark, um, we still couldn't start the engine. So we, we had to dig deeper and we opened the... Um, uh, the section that contains the valves and we discovered that one of the push rods was broken. We couldn't immediately find the replacement part um, here in Martinique so he bought a screwdriver and made a piece from that. Um, I don't know if that, how long it's gonna work but we basically were able to use that as a temporary solution perhaps until we find the actual replacement part. Um, but let's take it one step at a time. Let me show you how we've replace that and how we adjusted the gap of the valves. Uh, we didn't know anything about it so we had to uh, bring in um, our friend who is also a mechanic who explained everything to us and I've just recorded the video so hopefully this will be helpful to you in case you have a similar problem. Let's go! And this is the tool that we're going to be using to adjust the gap in the valves. That's a filler gauge. A filler gauge. Here's our resident mechanic. <laughs> who knows all the right terminology. Okay, here we go. As a first step, we have to insert the push rods into the proper sockets and then make sure that they basically go up and down as the engine rotates. So we insert them, we feel them with our fingers and we rotate the engine with the starter cable. and. Um, they move up and down. Once the push rods are in place, we put the levers back in and we secure them. When you put the levers, you need to make sure that the push rod goes into its proper socket and yeah, like there and you make sure that you don't tighten the nuts too tight yet because um, as the engine warms up the push rod expands and becomes longer so we need to leave a proper gap. In order to see what gap we're going to leave we're going to look at the manual. You can see the intake valve and the exhaust valve gaps specified right there. In order to differentiate the intake valve from the exhaust valve, you basically just look at it. The intake valve is the one that's closest to the carburetor and the exhaust valve is the one closest to the manifold. Before we set the gap, we need to turn the engine to the position where both valves are closed. Once you've done that, you insert the filler gauge between the valve and the lever and then you tighten the nuts so that they basically snug with that filler gauge in place. After you remove the filler gauge, 
the levers will be a little bit loose you can touch them with your finger and then you basically just put the cover back on and start the engine As you can see, the motor started just fine. Uh, I guess one thing worth mentioning is that the way we diagnosed this problem, the way we first discovered that there was something odd about the valves, is uh, we tried to start the motor with the start assist fluid or whatever, like whatever that spray can is called. And basically there was no compression. We could feel no suction in the carburetor air intake um, when we cranked the motor. So that's how we knew that there was a problem with the valves. And as an obligatory closing remark, if you liked the video, if it was helpful to you, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe or put the thumbs up because this helps me get the channel out there and I need at least a thousand subscribers to get the, the name in the URL. And I kind of want to do that. So please subscribe and um, put the thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to answer them the best I can. Cheers. Bye.